In this lecture, we continue our discussion of the Thevenin theorem and the concept of the Thevenin equivalent circuit by presenting an example that utilizes the Thevenin equivalent circuit to solve for an unknown voltage in a circuit that contains both independent and dependent sources. Alright, well let's take a look at a circuit that has three 10 ohm resistors, a 4 amp independent current source, a dependent current source whose current is twice the current through this 10 ohm resistor. And what we'd like to do is analyze this circuit and determine the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor. Now what I'd like to do is show you how to do this by using the Thevenin equivalent circuit for all of the circuit that is to the left of this 10 ohm resistor for which we want to find the output voltage. So what we'd like to do is analyze this part of the circuit and determine its Thevenin equivalent. That is, we want to replace this circuit between these two terminals with one independent voltage source and one resistance. Now the first step in solving for the Thevenin equivalent is always to find the open circuit voltage. So let's label this open circuit voltage between these two terminals as VOC and what we'd like to do is use some analysis techniques to determine what this voltage would be. Now the way I'll do this is I'll begin by let me just set this as my reference or ground node. Let me call this node VA and if I can solve for VA, I'll solve for the open circuit voltage as VA minus the voltage drop across this resistor. So let's see, in terms of this unknown voltage VA, node voltage VA, ID, the current through this 10 ohm resistor, well let's see, that's going to be VA over 10. So that means that the current through this 10 ohm resistor is going to be twice VA over 10. So let me take this node and I'm going to write Kirchhoff's current law, or use Kirchhoff's current law, see if we can determine an expression for VA. So the current flowing through this 10 ohm resistor is VA over 10. And then we have 4 amps flowing into this node, so we'll subtract 4 and then the current flowing out of the node in this direction, well we, since we have an open circuit this current is just simply the current provided by the dependent current source so that's twice ID so we'll add twice ID but that's twice since ID is VA over 10 that's twice VA over 10 and those sum of those three currents that has to be equal to zero So let's see, VA times 3 tenths is equal to 4. So that'll let me solve for VA as 40 over 3 volts. Now, the open circuit voltage It's going to be, well this is the voltage at this point relative to ground, so it's the voltage at this point relative to ground minus the voltage drop in this direction, so that would be the current through this resistor times the resistance and the current is twice ID, but ID is VA over 10. So this is going to be VA minus 2VA, so that'll be negative VA which is negative 40 over 3 volts. So at this point we've solved for the open circuit voltage which we determined to be negative 40 over 3 volts.
Now the open circuit voltage is the Thevenin voltage, so at this point we still need to solve for the Thevenin resistance, and there's two ways to do that. One way we could short these terminals and solve for the short circuit current, and then the Thevenin resistance is the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Another way we could do it is set all of the independent sources to zero and then determine the equivalent resistance. So let me show you both of those ways. For the first method, we'll take these terminals and we will place a short across them and then the current flowing through the short is the short circuit current. And we'll try to solve for that current. Now one way to do that would be to label mesh currents in this circuit. So I'll call this mesh current I1. I'll label this mesh current I2. And I'll label this mesh current I3. Now in terms of some of the other currents that we're interested in, I'll make a few observations. And one is that ID the current on which this dependent current source depends is negative I1. Then I'll note that 4 amps is equal to I2 minus I1, so I2 is equal to 4 plus I1. And then let's see, I3, so 2ID is equal to I2 minus I3. So I3, well I3 then would be equal to I2, but I2 is 4 plus I1. minus 2ID, but ID is negative I1, so that would be plus 2I1. So I3 is equal to 4 plus 3I1, and that's also equal to the short circuit current ISC. So what I've just done is taken the current ID and related it to I1, the current I2 and related it to I1, and then I3 is also expressed in terms of I1. So now all of the mesh currents have been expressed in terms of I1. So if I can write one loop equation, I should be able to solve for I1. And the loop I'll use is to start at this position and work all the way around the outside of the circuit. So if I do that and use Kirchhoff's voltage law, look at the, the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor. So we'll have 10 times I1. and then we'll have 10 and then the current flowing in this direction is I2 but I2 is 4 plus I1 and then if I move all the way around that loop I encounter no other elements so I can set this equal to 0 and so 20 I at times I1 is equal to negative 40 or I1 is negative 2 amps. And then from this expression, the short circuit current, well that's 4 plus 3 I1, and I1 is negative 2, so that's 4 minus 6, or that 2, that will also be negative 2 amps. So now we've solved for the short circuit current. and that's negative 2 amps. So at this point we would be finished. The Thevenin voltage is negative 40 over 3 volts and the Thevenin resistance is the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current so that would be 20 over 3 ohms. But what I'd like to do is show you another way of finding the Thevenin resistance 
by determining the equivalent resistance of this circuit and show you that you'll get the same answer and then you can try both of those and decide which one is the easiest for this particular circuit. Well to determine the equivalent resistance first we'll take these off and now what we'll do is take the independent source set that equal to zero since that's a current source we'll replace that current source with an open circuit and we'll look back into the circuit and determine the equivalent resistance. So what we'd like to do now is determine the equivalent resistance looking into this circuit. Now to do that we're going to use the most general method for determining equivalent resistance. For circuits that have no Recall that for circuits that have no dependent sources, we can use uh, our methods for combining resistors that are in parallel and resistors that are in series and reduce the circuit to a single resistance. But when we have a dependent source, we have to use a more general method that would work in situations where we have only resistors. And that method is to either apply a known voltage and measure the current, or to apply a known current and measure a voltage and the equivalent resistance will be the ratio of the voltage to the current. Now for this particular problem what I'm going to do is apply a voltage source. I'm going to apply a known voltage here and I'll make that voltage 1 volt. And the reason I'm doing that is that by applying a known voltage across these two nodes I'll have a known voltage across these, this, these two resistors which is an equivalent resistance of 20 ohms. That means I'll know this current ID that controls this current source. So again what I want to do is analyze this circuit and determine the current that flows into the circuit I. Now because I have one volt across 20 ohms this current ID will be equal to one volt divided by 20 ohms or 1 over 20 amps. So if I have 1 over 20 amps flowing here, I have twice ID flowing in this direction. So this total current would be ID plus 2 ID. So the current that we'll see in this circuit is ID plus 2 ID, so that's 3 ID. Which would be 3 over 20 amps. So the equivalent resistance then is the ratio of the voltage that we're applying, 1 volt, to the current that we see flowing into the circuit and that's 3 over 20. So the equivalent resistance is 20 over 3 ohms. So we could determine that the equivalent resistance between those two terminals is 20 over 3 ohms. So we've got the open circuit voltage, the short circuit current, and the equivalent resistance. The Thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage. The Thevenin resistance can be obtained in one of two ways. It's the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current, which would be 20 over 3 ohms, or it's the equivalent resistance that we've just determined, which is 20 over 3 ohms. Well, now that we've determined the Thevenin equivalent circuit, let's replace the circuit with its Thevenin equivalents, and we'll bring the 10 ohm output resistor back in and we'll solve for VO. So now we can use a voltage division and VO would be the voltage across both of these resistors which is negative 40 divided by 3 times the ratio of the output resistance 10 to the sum of these two resistances which would be 20 divided by 3 plus 10 so this would be negative 400 
divided by 50, which would be negative 8 volts. And that's an example of using the Thevenin equivalent circuit to solve for an output voltage. And we've shown two ways to determine the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And one is to determine the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current, and then look at the ratio of those two. And another is to just determine the equivalent resistance by setting the independent sources to zero and applying a known source. Both of those are valid methods, and the one that you might use for a particular problem is a matter of preference and perhaps simplicity for the particular circuit.